here The Watchman presents The Future of America with Mike Kerr. Isaiah 21, 6 says, For thus the Lord said unto me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he sees. Today, Mike Kerr and his fellow watchmen discuss current events through a biblical lens and how these events affect us, the future of America, and the world we live in. Good morning, everybody. I'm Mike Kerr, and this is The Future of America, where we talk about the issues at hand and where we're going in 2022. Today, I'm so excited and blessed to have with us a wonderful man out of Lima, Ohio. His name is Pastor Mike Spaulding, and he is the pastor at the Calvary Chapel there in Lima, Ohio. He has been a speaker at our Hear the Watchman conferences and a frequent guest on our show. Dr. Spaulding, thank you so much for joining us. Mike, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. <laughs> and always a pleasure to talk to you. Now, Dr. Spaulding, you know, I mean, let's take a look at what's going on in our country today. Good news is, we saw the election results in Virginia yesterday, and I want to remind everybody that just a couple of weeks ago, Kamala Harris said that whatever happens in Virginia will be foretelling as to what will happen in 2022, 2024, and beyond for the Democratic Party. Way to go, Kamala. Thank you. We are so excited to see where we're going. Pastor Mike, what is your view on where is a country we're going, and is there is there hope that we're going to be able to bring it back? Yeah, well, great question, Mike, and and uh, there are a lot of different answers uh, to that question, depending on who you listen to, and um, and I guess that's a that's a uh, that's a topic that people should pay attention to. Who are you listening to? Who, where, where is your hope now? You and I, we're not peddlers of, of this new, this new uh, word that's been coined in the last couple of years, hopium, hopium. We're not, we're not peddlers of that. And I don't think Christians should be peddlers of hopium. Um, we should look at what's going on in our, in our world, in our nation, and we should, we should take a realistic approach, a realistic analysis, and we should evaluate things as they truly are. However, Having said that, I do want to remind people, Mike, none of this is a surprise to our creator. None of this is a surprise to the father. He, he, didn't, he didn't throw his hands up and say, wow, I didn't see this coming. This is things are not falling apart. Things are coming together. This is all part of his plan. And, and one of the things that I, I keep telling people, Mike, is that in the midst of all this darkness, the gospel light shines the brightest. Now is the time to take up the gospel and be pushing that out, outside the doors of your meeting place, whether you're in a home church or whether you still meet in a, a, a traditional brick and mortar building, we should be taking the gospel of salvation through faith alone and Christ alone to the cities in which we live. Now is the time Midst of this this climate of fear, and I love your hat, by the way. That's that's a perfect perfect statement. That's a perfect statement. It is faith over fear. We should be pushing that. We should be taking that out. Now's the time to do that, Mike. So, where are we at? Well, the nation is in is in. Uh, well, how would how would we even describe it, Mike? The, the nation is in the pigsty. Um, the nation is in the sewer. Uh, our capital is a cesspool of wickedness, evil, witchcraft, occultism. That's the reality of it. And, and that has, has been, the curtain has been pulled back. God has shown us all of that, brother. He has shown us where we're at. It reminds me, in fact, of Ezekiel chapters 8 through 11, where in a vision, God takes Ezekiel and shows him exactly what is transpiring in Ju uh, Judah and in Jerusalem, especially in the temple complex. He says, look at all the abominations. Look at all the blasphemies. Look at the idol worship. He takes them to secret chambers and shows them what the leaders of the people are doing. That's exactly what God has done in America, brother. 
he has shown us what our quote unquote leaders have been doing and continue to do. It is evil at a level that we've never seen in this nation. That doesn't mean that we should cower in fear and anxiety and all of these things. That doesn't, doesn't mean that at all. It means that we should be bold, bold as lions, Mike, and, and be out there with, with, with the message of Christ because only Jesus saves. So that's, that's, that's a, 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 an accurate or a real assessment but it also gives us the things that we need to be doing, I think. Well, amen. And, and you know, that's, that's a very real look at, at what we're up against in our country today. It is evil. You know, you have, you have been very active. You have been out and you have been in the streets ministering and preaching. What do you find when you do that? What is the response from the public when you do that out there? And you're talking about, I've seen you in front of the courthouse. I've seen you in front of City Hall. What do the people think? They are hungry for truth, right? Even in, even in their lost state, even in, even in their estrangement from the Father, um, they know something's not right. They're in agreement with those of us who are born again, spirit-filled, blood-bought, redeemed by the Lamb, believers. They're in agreement with us that evil and wickedness, it's off the chain. They are in agreement. They, they understand. And so they're looking for solutions. And, and, and Mike, they're not finding them in their normal places. They're not finding them among their families and friends, among their coworkers. They're not finding because everybody else that they know in their circle, they're as bewildered as they are. And so they're open right now. They are open to hearing, well, here's the solution to what's going on. They're open. And I approach it this way, Mike, because this is the most disarming way to approach other people, especially lost people, ask them if you can pray for them. Just simply be the hands and feet of Jesus. Ask if you can, because I'll guarantee you, you ask if you can pray for them and you're going to get people say, absolutely, because I need it. They say, tell us that all the time. In fact, we've even had shirts made up that says, how can I pray for you on the front? And when people see that, you don't even have to ask them. They come to you. Last time Kathy and I were out in uh, uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, it's about an hour away from us, a uh, city of about 200,000. Um, they had a festival over there about a month or so ago. And Kathy and I went and she was wearing her shirt, How Can I Pray For You? She had at, least, at minimum, Mike, no exaggeration, at minimum of a dozen people that came to her and said, would you pray for, and then whatever was on their mind or on their heart. So people are open to the supernatural. They're, they, 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 like, like, I haven't seen in decades, Mike, they are open to the reality that God does care, that he will hear their prayers, and he wants to respond in a way that will answer their, their heart's desires. And so, that's what we need to do. Be out on the streets because, Mike, you and I are about the same age. We've seen the church from the 60s and the 70s. People came to church in those days. They don't come to church today. We got to go get them. We've got to go to them. In fact, that's what the commission, our commission tells us. Go, therefore, unto all the nations. <laughs> We're to go to them because they're not coming to us. So when you go to the streets, folks, you go with a disarming message. You're not there to be confrontational. You're not there to challenge anybody. You're there to represent Christ. Go there in the compassion and sympathy. And often when you meet people, Mike, you'll, you'll realize, well, I can empathize with you because I've been through the same thing you've been through. And I can tell you something. When a lost person meets someone who knows the Father, the glow of Jesus is on their countenance, and then they hear, wait a minute, 
you've experienced the same trials and travails, nastiness, ugliness, evil in your life that I, and yet you survived and you're like this, man, that gives them something to go on, Mike. So go out into the streets, friends, just share Christ. Walk in your neighborhoods. We spent the entire summer this year, Calvary Lima, we spent the entire summer this year just walking around the neighborhoods around our church. We went downtown Lima and we were just engaging people. Some, some people were mowing their grass and, and, and we stopped them, gave them a break, <laughs> asked them if we could pray for them, handed them a Bible, said, would you receive the word of God? Some people, one, one guy trimming his hedges, I, I, and, and I announced my presence there. I didn't want him whipping around with those hedge trimmers when I was so, because I was too close. So I said, hey, hey, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? I was about 10 feet away. He stopped, man, he was sweating. He said, thank you for the break. <laughs> so they're wanting to talk with us, Mike. They're wanting somebody that can make sense out of what's going on in our, in our nation today. And brother and sister, those of you who joined us for this show, that's you. That's you. If you have the spirit of God living in you, that's you. That's your commission. You're to go out to the people and share the hope that is in Christ. What's it say in 1 Peter? We are to be ready in season and out of season to share the reason for the hope that is in us. And that's the Lord Jesus. Mike, that, that is the solution to everything that's going on today. Share Christ. Well, you know, it's, it's, I'm just, uh, I'm beaming listening to you, Pastor, because, I mean, just think what would have happened if Jesus sat under a tree and waited for everyone to come to him, right? I mean, where would we be today if that was the deal, you know? Uh, we see in America today such a fragmented political system. Do you think that anyone will ever trust the election process again? Wow. Yeah. Well, I know that I don't. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my personal testimony. That's why I was shocked to see the results in Virginia. Mm -hmm. my, my, my first response was, oh, did they not use Dominion or, or, or did, they not, <laughs> did, they, did they not try? I mean, <laughs> listen, there is no political solution, friends, if Christ is not in it. There is no political solution to what this country uh, needs unless Jesus is in it. And so what we need to do is we need to take a good long look in the mirror because then we'll be looking at ourselves. And I, well, Mike, I don't know any other way than to just say it. America is in the position that it's in today because of the Christians in the church. We have, we have sat down Along with our, our fellow brothers and sisters, citizens, brethren, Americans, we have sat down and enjoyed the fruit of the founders in the last couple of hundred years, the fruit of Christianity, because Christianity is, is what this nation was founded on. Our laws, our morality, our ethics, all of those things came out of Christianity, science, medicine, I, mean, I could go on and on and on. It's all on a foundation of Christ, but we've sat back and we haven't defended that against all of the attacks that have come against us. We could go all the way back to, to the 1800s, to the rise of the social gospel that, that really the governments and, 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 and the manipulators of our government way back in the late 1800s used the church to bring in the social gospel and got us off, off focus and, and then prayer left the schools and Bible reading left the schools. And then we came in with all of these other discoveries in the constitution. Who knew they were there, right? Christians sat back and watched all of this happened. And we, well, we might've have, might have whined and complained and you know, moaned and groaned a little bit. But at the end of the day, we went back to our lives and back to the thing, you know, well, guess what? Pied Piper, time to pay the Piper. That's where we're at right now. So if we're going to turn this around and head us back in the right direction, my Christians have got to re-engage with our culture. And that needs to start at the local level. Can you believe now that we are in a nation, Mike, where, where the Department of Justice has now said that parents who complain to school boards and tell school boards, you will not teach our children this, 
for domestic terrorists. Can you imagine that? Well, guess what, folks? We allowed it to get to this place. So now it's it's not time to say, oh, okay, well, I don't want to be labeled a domestic terrorist, so I guess I'll just stand down. No, you keep pressing because we're gaining traction. We are making progress in pushing back against this darkness. So don't give up. You keep doing that, those of you who are going to school board meetings, those of you who are engaging your teachers and your superintendents in your local districts, those of you who are running for county commissioner, for mayors of your city, for city council, all of these things, you keep doing that because if we're going to redirect America back to the path of righteousness, then it's going to start at the grassroots level. Only then, when we have a groundswell, are we going to be able to address Washington, D.C. Until we do that, Mike, we're not going to change a thing. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And look at folks. Here's the secret message. I'm going to give you the secret message right now. Get off the couch and get out and spread the word. Amen. That's it. Secret. That's it. Secret. So, Pastor, uh, you've got uh, you've got an exciting event coming up this weekend uh, that you're participating in. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, uh, the the Hidden Day, David Paxton's uh, ministry, he has launched out into to, uh, hosting conferences. So, the Hidden Day uh, Prophecy Conference. How close are we? is at the Harvest Revival Center in Brookville, Ohio, uh, this Friday, Saturday, uh, concludes Sunday morning. Um, I'll be speaking Saturday. I think I'm slotted for two o'clock in the afternoon, but many of our, of, of our brethren and, and uh, cadre uh, from Hear the Watchmen and, and uh, Go Therefore will be, will be speaking there. Uh, L.A. Marzuli. Uh, is is uh, is is one. Uh, Dr. Andy Woods will be there. Olivier uh, Melnick, um, Jeff Kinley, um, and I and I know I'm going to forget somebody. Pastor Casper, David Hebner, uh, Doug Woodward, Mark Sutherland, um, Billy Crone is going to be there. Chris Taylor, Pastor Neil Peterson. Um, just a whole uh, long list of, of wonderful speakers. You can go to thehiddenday.com and register for that. Um, I think it's going to be a great time, Mike. I wish you lived closer, brother, because we could sure be doing some stuff together. I know. I'd, I I would love to. You know, I just, uh, Jeannie and I, uh, folks, are just, we're, we're planning 2022 for Hear the Watchman, and I can tell you something. We like to drive now to go to the conferences, so uh, we'll see, though. We're, we have lots of faith in what's going on in the year ahead and what God will do for all of us. So, Pastor, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today to join us on the show. Well, Mike, it's always a blessing and an honor, brother. I appreciate what you and Jeannie are doing, what the Lord has enabled you and continues to provide for you to do. It is a blessing to the body. Well, folks, that's going to wrap it up for today's edition of The Future in America. We'll be back this week with more shows for you to check out and take a look at. Please subscribe to our channel. Uh, take the time to click the bell so you get notifications of upcoming shows. Also, everyone that's watching this that knows Russ and Shelley Dizdar, please pray for Shelley Dizdar. While we were on this interview, I did get a message that was disturbing. She has been moved to ICU and is being intubated. So please pray for Shelley and her recovery. Pray hard to God. We'll see you next time on The Future of America. God bless and remember. Never, ever give up and always help your brothers and sisters. Okay. Yeah, that was, I'm sitting here interviewing you and Jeannie sends me a text. Oh boy, Mike. It says, uh, good. urgent, Shelly is in ICU and intubating. That's not good. No, you know, I don't know. That, and I, I mean, let me stop the recording here. Hold on. To support the work of Hear the Watchman, find a way to get involved, or learn more about upcoming events, visit our website at www.
hearthewatchman, M-E-N, dot com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hear the Watchman Journey, and be sure to share our content on your social media. God bless you, and thanks for your prayers and support. And until next time, go be a watchman on the wall and declare all that God has shown you.